Welcome to Crumlin Bog National Nature Reserve, the largest lowland fen in the whole of Wales. It's a brilliant place for all kinds of wildlife, especially rare plants, rare invertebrates, and it's home to the fen raft spider, one of only a handful of sites for this very rare species in the whole of the UK. This fen was formed at the end of the last ice age as the ice retreated, forming shallow lakes. Slowly, vegetation grew around the banks, on the water itself. As that died, it formed peat, and that peat now forms a carpet over the whole site. Now, parts of Kremlin Bog are known as quaking bogs. Why? Watch this. See all the vegetation shaking all around me? That's because the peat has formed over water. And peat is a very scarce habitat that grows incredibly slowly. Only about one millimeter a year. And parts of the peat out here are up to nine meters deep. Now peat is an extremely scarce habitat. Only 4% of Wales is covered in peat, but it locks away up to 30% of the soil-based carbon. But a recent report shows that 90% of our peat is unfavorable conservation condition. And that is why the Welsh Government has set very ambitious targets. The peat is in poor condition because of human activities or a lack of management. All kinds of different reasons. There's industry, there's pollution, there's too much grazing, there's not enough grazing in other areas, and there's also invasive plants growing here. And all of that prevents the peat from forming properly. Amongst the many projects trying to restore our peatlands is LifeQuake. Now this is funded by LIFE in association with the Welsh Government, carried out by Natural Resources Wales in partnership with the National Trust, the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park Authority and Snowdonia National Park. And this will be the last of the LIFE funding because we've now of course through Brexit left Europe. Right, I'm going to head off now and see some of the work that's being done here. Now, before you undertake any work on a site like this, you really need to understand the hydrology of the site. So here, to explain how that is done, is Senior Project Officer Gareth. Okay, so this is one of the dip wells we installed at the beginning of the project. Um, reason being, we needed a baseline to understand what the hydrology of the site is doing. So the only way we can do that is by having this little bit of kit. The dip well itself will record water levels hourly for up three years or so. So for the whole life of the project. So we know where we are now before we've started restoration in the project and how high the water levels are and how that fluctuates throughout the seasons. Great case scenario, last year is the wettest year on record. So yeah. we've got a worst case scenario. Now that we've begun our restoration, we'll be able to see how that impacts on the water levels for the future. So it's an amazing little bit of kit. This just pulls out and we can plug it into our laptops and download all the data we need just from that bit of kit. And that's it, is it? That, that is it. And that will live there for the life of the project. And every six months or so, we'll come plug it into the computer and, and try and get an understanding of, of exactly what the water levels will do, are doing. And, you know, it, it'll show us, as I say, what the project's actions are doing to reduce the water levels off the site in this case. Um, but it'll also show us if we've done too much. Right. So if we start losing too much water, we don't want to drop it off the site because then we risk damaging the peat that's here. Yeah. So we'll be able to put a stop on it and go, okay, hold on, we're losing too much water what do we need to do to prevent that happening until we find that right balance that's just going to be perfect for the for the plants on the site and the production of peat. Now another part of the life funding project is getting rid of invasive species and one of the techniques used for that is stem injection. Now I'm hoping you're going to tell me exactly what stem injection means. Sure, so uh, where tree species are encroaching onto the bog we uh, make a downward notch cut with a hatchet and then into that we pour a small amount of herbicide with dye into it 
and then the herbicide uh, systemically kills the tree from the roots. And then what that does, rather than lose the tree entirely, it allows us to retain standing deadwood, which as you know is an important habitat feature in itself. So if you just cut it, the tree will just grow back, will it? Yes, yeah, that's essentially coppicing. So the, the tree would grow back from the rootstock and we'd have to be here all over again to, to do it again. And of course, you don't want, I mean, trees are good, but not on a wetland like this. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, trees are wonderful. They've got many important characteristics that we need them. But if though characteristics of the bog are more important than the trees, then by all means, let's not have the trees, let's have the bog. There's a rich and varied industrial history surrounding Crumlin Bog, perhaps most notably the network of canals that were built to transport coal down to the Swansea docks. On the edge of Crumlin Bog is a confluence of the Port Tennant Canal, where the hand-cut Glanawern Canal branches off and stretches right across the middle of the bog itself. Lifequake are clearing the Glanawern Canal and linking it back up with the Port Tennant Canal. Now I knew about the Tenants Canal, but I'd never heard before of the Glanawern Canal. It's your job to clear that. Why is that work important? To help regulate the water through the bog. So the, uh, the canal at the moment has become quite vegetated, which is holding the water back. Um, the idea is that we can remove some of that vegetation so then the water flow can be controlled to then regulate the water in the bog. Have you done this kind of work before? We have, yeah. Uh, it comes with a lot of challenges. Um, so this bog hasn't been worked on uh, previously so there's a lot of unknown territory out there and um, ground conditions can be quite variable across the bog so yeah lots of challenges and um, uh, we just sort of do our best to manage that risk as we work across the site. It's got to be difficult though you know this is a bog, a quaking bog in parts, it's got to be difficult to work in those kinds of conditions. It's really difficult yeah um, we've got some really skilled operators and um, we use low ground pressure machinery uh, and we literally feel our way in very very slowly um, and just try and keep the keep on top of the challenges and, uh, and hopefully get the, the job done. One of the fantastic instruments they have in managing Crumlin Bog here is a thing called the Piston Bully. This is it over here. It's kind of a wetland harvester and the tracks are so wide that it doesn't sink into the bog. The Piston Bully cuts through grassy tussocks, reeds and even small trees, leaving the surface of the bog exposed and giving the important bog building plants and mosses a better chance to thrive. Once it has been mown, the bog is also far easier to access for grazing wild stock, nature's own wetland harvesters, who will then play their part in managing the vegetation there. Now as if driving one of these machines wasn't dangerous enough on this bog, there's always a chance of coming across unexploded ordnance. This dates back from World War II, when this whole bog was like a bombing alley for the German bombers as they tried to bomb the Landassi oil refinery, which was the biggest oil refinery in Britain at that time. Ahead of all the project actions taking place at Crumlin, Lifequake have been working closely with contractors who specialise in unexploded ordnance, uh, and a considerable amount of survey work has taken place to identify anything that might be within the peat that shouldn't be there. This is why I really came down and kind of a go now in the piston bully to see how it works. I gotta say that was brilliant, amazing bit of machinery. I don't know how much I can do it. I don't know how much I can do it. 
there are so many different aspects to this project and one of the really important ones is working with local farmers to bring back restorative grazing you need the right amount of grazing not too much and yet not too little and that will help to remove some of the plants like these young trees that we don't want on here and what that does is it encourages the growth of the proper plants wetland plants and also their death to form peat under the right environment you know what it's remarkable that crumbling bog is still here considering how close we are to the quarter of a million people who live in swansea and over the years there have been so many threats there's been a power station there's been the sandasi oil refinery there's a landfill site coal mines canals housing developments and yet Crumlin bog is still here and it's a paradise for all kinds of wildlife it's been so uplifting for me to come here and see all the hard work going on under the life quick project the restoration of such a valuable habitat and for me the next invaluable step is to encourage people to come and see what they have here we don't brag about these things often enough in wales this is an amazing habitat and an amazing place